Hey everyone, we are at the MSI booth at CES 2018 looking at two primary products. One is a prototype, the other one is in front of me. That's the Z370 godlike motherboard for Intel's, of course, Coffee Lake platform. It's got some interesting power design we'll be talking about. We've got most of the information on this one, and it's definitely a flagship, probably in the 500-ish dollar range. So we'll be get getting to that after this. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Thermal Take and the Flow Liquid Cooler. The Flow is a 360 millimeter radiator with three RIN RGB LED fans. You can program the fans for custom lighting through software, and then of course benefit from the larger radiator size in cooling performance. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for the Z370 Godlike board, this is a brand that has existed in the past for MSI. They're bringing it back for Coffee Lake. They've got a couple of key features here. Obviously, this has a lot of the gamer embellishments on it with, uh, for example, caution, ultimate power, and things like that. The most interesting feature on the MSI motherboard is probably the network switch that's built in. The network switch, basically, it's three Ethernet ports on the back of the board, and you can plug a console or some other device into the board, and then out of it will come the signal that goes back to the router. So you can actually use the board as a switch itself for another device. Uh, at the base of it, it's an 18 phase, so it has it's a, a doubled eight phase VRM plus two for the memory, and they're using IR or International Rectifier 3555 MOSFETs for it with a 35201 controller, which we've seen actually pretty frequently in the last couple months uh, for the, that's also IR by the way, for the voltage controller. Other than that, uh, memory support is 4133 megahertz at its max for this board officially, and uh, that is powered by the two-phase VRM, VMEM, VRM. Uh, other information, those are 60 amp power stages, so the 3555s are 60 amp stages. Uh, it can handle plenty of power, it's spread out over 16 of them for vCore. And the, the heatsink on this one is getting closer to what we're looking for. Uh, it, so it is, it's kind of diced in a way that it's not just a big aluminum block this time, it does actually have some surface area to it. And then it's got the usual covers uh, for IO cover and for the kind of metal top cover with all the branding on it. So it's getting there. It's, it's looking better than previously. Uh, for power configuration, this one is an 8 plus 4 for EPS 12 volt. There's also a 6-pin PCIe power for the PCIe slots, of which there are uh, four 16-length slots. So those would be by 16 and then 3 by 8s, by 16, 8, 8, 8, all the way down the board, which is uh, definitely on the high end for PCIe electrical wiring, so a lot of the boards do by fours in there as well. So that, that's kind of cool if you like doing a four-way setup uh, for GPUs. Other than that, I, most of the boards kind of covered at this point. There's um, kind of the expected USB 3.1 Gen 2 and support for all that stuff that you've seen in basically every board at this point. It has the built-in overclocking switch. It uses a lookup table, so you turn it to different numbers. It checks a lookup table. It applies that overclock to your CPU and whatever else, uh, and then you're pretty much good to go. Obviously, we would recommend you manually overclock these boards. It's uh, decently powerful, uh, but it is an expensive board, so might be something we look at in the future with Buildzoid to analyze the VRM for its actual high-end overclocking capabilities. The I, I'll mention the M2 heat shield since we've done that in the past. So these this time are they're aluminum instead of the previous, which was a stainless steel. Uh, so aluminum is significantly better thermal conductor than stainless steel for the Gen 1. And they're also using uh, slightly thicker thermal pads, which is just good for ensuring that there's flush contact with all of the components. Uh, and of course, I've talked about the difference of cooling NAND versus controllers in the past, so we won't go through that again. But those are all of the main changes on this one. And for the other item, the prototype that I mentioned, that is a new edition of the Titan laptop, which uh, is the sort of Halo product that we've seen in the past with the mechanical keyboard, all that stuff. So just ignoring all of those features for a moment, this is a product where MSI is trying to introduce HDR displays to laptops. Uh, we, I, one, we can't film it with HDR display. And two, it's relevant because we don't have an HDR camera and probably 99% of you don't have an HDR display either. But the idea is they're putting HDR displays in laptops. Uh, right now, it's extremely limited. There are five of them in existence. There are two here and they are prototypes. So it's a little while out. Uh, sort of long-term view, MSI is trying to go for HDR 100 hertz displays, which would be 
crazy if they can pull it off and eventually roll it out into smaller consumer laptops that are more affordable and not just Halo products. But they're starting there because they have limited quantity. So MSI has told us that they are ready to go. They're just waiting for their suppliers to produce enough of the panels to use in laptops at the laptop sizes. And uh, major challenges for HDR displays have included primarily thermals. So you have obviously a higher power, higher quality display sitting in your laptop, which is pretty enclosed, they have to deal with thermals. So that's been the main thing they've been dealing with. Uh, and they're trying to work towards obviously making sure that the display can sit in there without burning out. So it'll be a little while waiting on supply and working on the thermal challenges, but it's something to keep an eye out for if you're interested in that kind of thing. Ultimately means HDR is coming to consumer in a much greater way for the next few years. So that's it for MSI Suite. As always, you can check links in the description below for other articles from CES. You can subscribe to us for additional coverage at the show and help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.